Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to analyze a simple two-player simultaneous one-shot game. I'll be doing that in the context of the two famous games that I introduced in the last video, so if you haven't seen that one yet, go ahead and watch that first. In general, when we're talking about analyzing a game, we are trying to figure out what the actions in some kind of equilibrium that we would get from our players. As with any economic agents, our players are motivated by getting a higher payoff. In the two games we just looked at, we're going to be using utility as our payoffs. Later on, when we head into talking about oligopoly models, we'll be mostly talking about firms motivated by profit. But the basic idea is the same. The first concept that I need to introduce is that of the best response. I'm going to write out the formal mathematical definition of a best response, and then we can go from there. This formal definition might look like a bunch of gibberish at first, but I'm going to break it down piece by piece. SI, that is lowercase SI, is a best response if this condition is satisfied. So we're talking about an individual strategy SI and trying to determine whether this is a best response. Our player I, now I could be player 1, could be player 2, could be any player in the game. If they are playing strategy SI and everybody else is playing whatever their own strategy is, then we will do at least as well with our current strategy SI than we would from switching to any other strategy. So our other strategies are represented as SI prime. What this inequality means is that given everybody else's strategies, so we are holding everyone else's strategies constant, they're going to just do whatever they're going to do, given that strategy, I can, I'm now going to consider what I would get out of switching from SI to some other strategy that's available to me. For SI to be a best response to the other player's strategies, S not I, then SI needs to be at least as good in terms of our utility as switching to any other strategy. This implies that holding the other player's strategies constant, I could not do any better than my current strategy by switching to any possible other strategy. Now there could be a tie. Some other strategy could be just as good as my current one, but as long as I couldn't do better switching to a different strategy, then I am playing a best response. This funny upside down A symbol just means for all. So all of the other SI primes in our strategy space of capital SI are not better than my current strategy. Now again, this all hinges on our S not I's being held constant. So we best respond to the other player's strategies. Now, of course, they're also going to try to be best responding to us. Because we have to be best responding to whatever the other players are doing, when we build a strategy that could possibly be a best response, we need to have a contingency plan for whatever the other player's action could be. If we're thinking about the prisoner's dilemma, our strategy for player one needs to account for whether the other player is going to think or whether they're going to stay silent. Likewise, player two is going to be doing the same thing when building their strategy for dealing with player one. Let's return to our Prisoner's Dilemma game and talk about what our two players' best responses are going to be. Let's think about player one's best response. Remember that we need to think about a contingency plan for anything that player two is going to throw at us. So first we want to think about what would be our best action if player two thinks. So we're going to just look at this column of the table. We assume player two is going to think, what should we do as player one? Well, one is better than zero, so our best response is think if player two thinks. Now let's look at what player one should do if player two stays silent. So we're just going to look at this right hand silent column and see what player one should do. Now if player one thinks they'll get three, if they stay silent they'll get two, so think is going to be better. So player one should think if player two is silent. Let's go ahead and look at the same question for player two. 
For player two, we're now going to take player one's actions as given. So first we'll say what happens if player one thinks. Player two can get one if they think, zero if they stay silent. So their best response here is think if player one thinks. Now we can do the same thing for what happens if player one is silent. We'll look at just the silent row here. Player two can get three from thinking, two from staying silent. Again, think is better. So part of their best response would be think if player one is silent. So you can see here that actually we end up with a pretty simple strategy for both players, which is always think for both player one and for player two. Now our best response functions are these two strategies. Player one's best response specifies what they should do for anything that player two will do. Player two's best response specifies what they should do for any player one actions. Let's return to our battle of the sexes game and talk about how to find the best responses. Let's return to our battle of the sexes game and talk about what the best responses are for each player. Let's start out with player one. When thinking about player one strategy, we need to think about what player two could potentially be doing. If player two goes to opera, which is the better choice for player one? Well, two is better than zero, so player one is better off picking opera if player two also picked opera. Likewise, if player two picked boxing, player one would get zero by going to opera, but one from going to boxing, so they'd rather go to boxing. The situation is exactly the same for player two, where player two is always going to want to go to wherever player one is going. So we have opera if player one picks opera, and we have boxing if player two picks boxing. Just like with the prisoner's dilemma, we have built up a best response strategy for both players. In the prisoner's dilemma, it did not matter what the other person was doing, the best choice was still always to think. Here things are a little bit more nuanced where it actually does matter what the other person is doing. You're always going to want to pick the same thing as the other player.